Hi, welcome to the 1 in 20 show where we're looking to find the next 1 in 20 successful individuals who are pursuing their passions so that you can too. And today we're joined by Lulu. Lulu Anorexa is an actress based out of Los Angeles. She is known for her lead roles in Tagged, Legacies, How to Rock, and many other shows. She is working every day to make a difference in the film industry through her hard work and expertise. She is a kind and generous individual who is an important asset to any Hollywood set. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming out here. Happy to be here. And making it work on a Saturday. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked out. Um, so I wanted to kind of start with talking about acting with mm-hmm. you. Obviously, that's your career path and, and what you chose. This show is so um, is like built around the arts in so many facets. So like musicians mm-hmm. and, and different people coming on. Um, so I know that you started out in How to Rock and like some other stuff prior to that. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it like? kind of jumping into the industry as you know a younger kid and then kind of learning the ropes through that well it's funny that you say I started out in how to rock because I was 15 years old when I booked how to rock I had been acting for 11 years prior to that so I started when I was four um and in terms of starting out when you're younger I'm very fortunate because I have such supportive and kind parents and their whole thing was this isn't coming from us whenever you want to quit you quit because this is not what we want for you, but yeah. we're going to support you. So it hmm. came from just a personal drive. Yeah. And in terms of, you know, what does that mean to grow up in the industry and yeah. to start really young? Um, you know, the great thing about acting is that and with any job, any job experience is only going to help you. Sure. Whether that's um, being told that you're not pretty enough for a job or <laughs> being on set and just seeing how that is and being, you know, seven years old and having to behave like an adult because Mm -hmm. you're at work now (laughs) and people are super kind Mm -hmm. and they treat you like a child, but there are times where they treat you like an adult. And Mm -hmm. so it was an exceptional learning experience and one that, you know, I think I had a lot because I have three older brothers. So there was never a time to act super young anyways. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, But then when I got How to Rock, I had graduated high school at that point. I was 15 years old. Oh, wow. Okay. right into the industry and then since then it was you're an adult Mm. you have to make adult decisions you have to realize that people's livelihoods are depending on this job and Mm. you need to work exceptionally yeah um and that's a lesson that everybody learns i just happened to learn it a little bit earlier yeah sure yeah and that's really cool about um like the design of film i've kind of um that's kind of what i've dabbled in um for Mm. a while i work as an editor so very I've, cool. The I last writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but it's cool to see uh, the collaboration, the huge collaboration mm-hmm. that a lot of people don't realize goes into even the smallest shows that are, you know, not even that big, but like from pre-production to production to post, and there's that's, so much in there. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And it's one of the coolest things about the medium of film in general is that it's just this huge collaborative piece of art Mm -hmm. that everyone gets to work on Mm -hmm. and when you see an exceptional movie you know that there are so many departments Mm. giving it their all whether it's hair and makeup wardrobe um, the grips the lighting camera work everyone is giving it 110 Mm percent and it's really cool to be able to experience that on sets where everyone is just so willing to work and Mm -hmm. not only willing to work they're exceptional at that work um that's such a unique thing about film that Mm -hmm. everyone is creating it together no one's higher than anybody else and it really is one of the coolest mediums of storytelling that Mm -hmm. we have yeah it's it's really you know like that whole beautiful collaboration that comes together and you mentioned like each piece um, is really exceptional at what they do. And honestly, if one piece falls apart, the whole thing kind of in some ways it falls could, apart yeah, or you have to replace can. a piece. And um, what is it like? Uh, there is obviously a distinction between on camera versus behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you say like being on camera is just as important? Obviously, you're the talent and mm-hmm. you're the reason the show happens. But um, what is talk about kind of the relationship between you and your other scene mates and like how that is like really important to the entire piece of, of work? Yeah, I, I think that's why chemistry reads are so important mm-hmm. in the casting process is mm-hmm. that uh, if you I mean, it can happen. There's that old story that um, Natalie Wood and her coworker on West Side Story that they yeah. really disliked one another. But yep. those were two exceptional actors because they put it aside and they created 
Tony and Maria and yeah. it's iconic. Yeah, sure. Um, but you know, there are times that you have coworkers that feel like family mm. and that's really special and unique, but it's an exception. It's not a rule. Right. There are some times where you just can't stand the people that you're working with. It's mm-hmm. like any other workplace. Mm-hmm. You have to put it aside, say, mm. Hey, we're going to do a job together. We're going to make it great. And hopefully they have that same mindset as you. Um, and it's just like any other person at any other workplace has to put aside how they feel about other people and mm-hmm. work well, work exceptionally, and yeah. hopefully treat each other really kindly. Yeah, hopefully, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the tricky thing, I think, with um, acting in particular. Um, I have a bunch of buddies who um, are have p- pursued that and shared kind of the process as far as like how much you really have to put into trying to book each job and like how many mm-hmm. auditions you go out for and you end up not getting, you know, even half or even like a third. Um, how much ambition do you have to have when it comes to saying, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life or you're going to try to? How much do you have to have? Um, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, your motive. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing it? Um, I find that the people who, you know, everyone's different and everyone puts timelines on themselves like hey I'm only going to do this for two years or I'm going to only do it for 10 years um personally just for me yeah it's about why am I doing this Mm. am I doing this because I want external success am I doing this because I want people to think that I'm really good at what I do or I'm really successful like am I doing this for others or am I doing this because I love storytelling Mm. and this is the desire that the Lord has given me and the competencies that he's given me right um and that's just my personal I guess ambition in a way it's how can I honor the Lord like what are the desires that he's given me and what am I good at Mm -hmm. so it's like here's what I'm good at and what I like doing and this is what I can monetize mm-hmm. and if I'm able to do it and pay my bills and that's the path I'm going to continue on yeah. the Lord will be very clear mm-hmm. when this is not a path that I should take anymore um, and I, I feel like everyone has that moment where it's like okay like it's time to move on mm-hmm. but in terms of ambition like you can be the most ambitious person in the world and be doing something for a wrong motive and vice yes. versa right um, right And ultimately, uh, the thing about acting is that it's so subjective. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, it's not a meritocracy uh, in a way that other employment Mm -hmm. should be, is sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, it's sometimes you could be the best person in the room and you're too short, Mm -hmm. or they just don't like your look, or a producer worked with someone a year ago and they would prefer to work with them again. So, there's so many factors that we don't know about. It's just, I'm going to do the best I can in this room and then leave it. Yeah. And you kind of have to put up a wall to that, I think, because mm-hmm. that's the tricky thing about all of the arts in general is like so many people are empaths and like they're used to um, doing pursuing things that they want to pursue. But then when like the going gets tough, like you see a lot of people who probably are destined to do it, go off and try to find something safer, like even in mm-hmm. school, um, you know. I've had guy friends who really like really wanted to go into film, but they didn't think it was safe enough, even though they had like a ton of talent for it. And then they went off and did something safer like business. And then now Mm -hmm. they're stuck at a desk that they don't even want to do the job. And, you know, and that's kind of tricky about the arts. I think a lot of people, um, if you're not like fully driven, I feel like you really don't get to that next level. I don't know if you could speak to that. Um, I think there's a lot of driven people who have seen different priorities in their life um i don't think necessarily it's like you only get to be you know successful in film if you're super driven Mm -hmm. i mean there's something to that but we also have to understand that work is tied to food Mm -hmm. you know if you don't work you don't eat so particularly when it comes to men i understand and respect when they go you know what I have a fiance or a wife or I would like to have a fiance or wife and I would really like to be able to have a steady job. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we forget sometimes because, you know, we're in Western culture is that arts is a privilege. Oh, yeah. A huge privilege. And if you're able to do it and you're making money and being able to pay your bills and Mm -hmm. you're being responsible about it. Fantastic. Right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And also there's nothing wrong with waiting tables and trying to be an actor Mm -mm. as long as you are paying your bills. That's amazing. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Do your thing. Keep yeah. working. Um, but I also really respect the people who say, you know what? Business is going to be where I can make money and feed a family. And so that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. We're not supposed to find our fulfillment in our jobs. Mm-hmm. That's not where our identities lie. Right. So I 
I have so much respect and admiration for people who also say, nope, this isn't for me anymore. Right. Yeah, that's good. I think that needs to be demystified a little more too. I think there's like a, there's like the glamour that's associated with that lifestyle. And I think a lot of people uh, forget that, you know, you, you do have to monetize what you do. And that's probably why um, a lot of people will go 100% for the art and then not so much for practical and like mm-hmm. thinking about life and, you know, and all of that. But um, let's go off of that and talk about Tagged, which that was mm-hmm. a show that you were on for a couple of years. Um, what was that experience like as a whole, like kind of like your next show that like you were a part of for a long body of time? Yeah, it was looking back on it. It was an incredible experience. It was so different every season that we did it. It felt different every time. Mm-hmm. Um I just absolutely adore all of my coworkers. The production team worked so hard. They were absolutely amazing. We were out in the desert for a couple months, just us. And (laughs) it was one of those rare moments where everyone was working exceptionally Mm -hmm. um, and was so kind and considerate to one another. And I made some really incredible friendships on that show. And people loved it which was great like that's, awesome. that's why that's we do you, it yeah. and hopefully it resonates <laughs> that's, with that's someone and we were you know yeah. telling a story of mm-hmm. social media and discernment um which i'm sure that a ton of people can you know yeah. it resonates with them right now which is great yes that's why we tell it and it was also super fun and scary and there was so much tension and mm-hmm. uh we enjoyed it cool. it was you know it's difficult to be away from family for months yeah on where did end. you guys shoot we shot in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. okay. So we shot cool. in Albuquerque. Yeah. Great town. Love yes. Santa Fe. Um, awesome. But yeah, it's me personally. It's very hard for me to be away from my family and mm. my people and my church for a long period of time, and to be out there for a month and a half. Like after a while, you really long to be home. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that also creates like a resilience and a dependency on the Lord, which I'm super thankful for. Yeah, that's important. Um, it was yeah. the first time I was ever first billed. I was number one on the call sheet on that show. And wow. Um, yeah. That weighed really heavily on me. I, I yeah. think I was just 19 or 20 when we first started it. And wow. I felt a huge weight of responsibility because I wanted to work well for all of these people who were working so hard and sacrificing their time with their families yeah, as well. You feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I had wonderful people I could rely upon um, in the cast and in the crew. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I tagged was a great experience. I couldn't ask for anything more. Awesome. That's really cool. And um, something that's interesting, too, is like we probably talked about this a little bit because the show's based on it. Um, But that whole social media thing that goes along with like uh, being an artist and and that sort of thing and and just how it's so a part of our everyday, Mm -hmm. you know, and how interesting that really is and how toxic it can be if you let Mm -hmm. it overtake you. Um, What's kind of your perspective, maybe even after doing the show and like... um, and even just in life, like it's such a huge part of everybody's life, but you know, it's yeah. taking away people from being genuine a lot of the time, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like when you have a phone or anything in front of you, you uh, don't have the accountability of mm-hmm. looking someone in the eye and yeah. saying it to the, their face. Yeah. But you know, the Lord, God created pleasure, the devil created excess. Mm. So that's how I feel about social media is yeah. I like promoting the work that I'm doing. Um, everyone is entitled to the art that I create, um, but you're not entitled to me. Mm. And so there are things in my life that I would prefer to remain private because yeah. I'm also, you know, a almost 24 year old young woman. I make mistakes. I have so, so much to learn mm. and it's already hard enough to learn those things. Mm. I don't want someone watching my mistakes and then saying, well, if this person did it, who I look up to or I admire for whatever reason, then that's OK, because it's not like yeah, I am totally not the not. level in which yeah. people should measure themselves against. And I feel like that could be for anyone mm. on social media. I mean, I follow Reese Witherspoon and sometimes I'm like, I admire you so much and I just want to be. But I'm like, no, I, I'm on my own path. That's her yeah. path. It's yeah. incredible what she's done and what mm-hmm. she's created. But I'm over here and that doesn't make me less than because I'm not at that point in my life already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'm not I don't really understand social media a huge amount. <laughs> I don't think anybody really um, does. I yeah. go on Twitter and I just try to be funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk about books and I put pictures of my cat and everyone's like, post a selfie. And I'm like, I'm really uncomfortable with that. Mm. But I will post pictures of me on set and Mm. things that I'm doing. But I I'm also like a 
a shy person uh, mm-hmm. in a way. I prefer yeah. to be by myself. I am very introverted. So, which putting, is kind of opposite the career path in a way. A little is, bit, yeah. yeah little bit. It putting myself out there is a little bit more difficult for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. it's. I don't know. Social media, is, it's such a tricky concept because there's so many things that are great about it and so many things that can be really detrimental to people. Yeah. I don't think Instagram or Twitter itself is detrimental to someone. I think that the way it's used can be. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think that's a good way to put it. It's it's very interesting, the whole excess point, because mm-hmm. um, in a way that excess of use really like um, makes somebody into an image that maybe they aren't right i mean that's pretty pretty obvious like surface Mm -hmm. uh surface level things instead of like deeper down things And i always appreciate people like yourself who um you know who just choose to filter what they share because there's a lot of things about you that you would rather you know develop in person with somebody or you know it's it's very weird that people think that for some reason they can just you know, spit it out on everybody and, you know, it, well, that's not in a bad that's way. That's the way that they use it. And yeah. that's totally fine. If you're yeah. comfortable with that and you yeah. want to share like the intimate parts of your life with everyone on social media, yeah. go for it. Mm-hmm. That's your life. That's what you're comfortable with. Cool. Yeah. I don't think that there's anything really wrong with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but for me, when social media really became a thing when I was on How to Rock and yeah. we mm-hmm. needed to have like our own Twitter profiles and Instagrams mm-hmm. and things like that, I realized that I had signed up for this, yeah. but my brothers didn't sign up for it. My mm-hmm. parents didn't sign up for it. The people that I may or may not have gone on dates with didn't sign up for it, mm-hmm. and my friends didn't sign up for it. Yeah. So I wanted to protect them as much as possible mm-hmm. because, I mean, they've already seen that and they're so gracious and kind with me, but it's still like, this isn't what you've chosen, it's what I've chosen. Right. So I'll put, you know, my work up on there and like silly things that I like, but there there is a line sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, when it comes to like, to acting, and you know, we kind of touched on this a little earlier, but when you think about pursuing next steps or future, I know like so much of that is really just kind of a toss up unless you mm-hmm. have like solid connections of upcoming work or, but, um, you mentioned this earlier speak to like the importance of like relationship building with not only like fellow castmates but like crew members like producers and different things and how that could you know like hopefully somehow you stay in mind or you know how does that look when you're looking toward future jobs and all that stuff when i'm on set Mm -hmm. my mindset is i'm here to do my job i'm here to do my job well i'm here to treat others around me well but I don't need to be your friend. If you Mm -hmm. wanna be friends, awesome, let's be friends. I would love that. I crave relationships, but I also understand that some people are of the same mind where it's like, I'm not, I have my friends and I have my group over here and this is work. Yeah. Um, In terms of like networking or things like that, I've never been very good at networking. Um, My mentality is treat others in a loving way, Um, treat them in a way that is above yourself yeah. and great relationships just come out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had really great relationships on set and I've had really harsh, unkind things said to me on set. Yeah. So I don't go in with a mentality of, oh, I've got to make friends with this producer to make sure that I'm in their mind for the next thing that they're producing. It's you're a human being and we're yeah. working in the same place. And if yeah. we have a great conversation over lunch, fantastic. Um, and in terms of castmates, like it's so different. I just did a movie where we worked a bunch of girls for three days. It was this little indie called Witch Hunt, and we really enjoyed our time together. And it was fun. And then we went our separate ways, and we still connect over social media. And hopefully, we'll like we want to go to like a painting class or something together, which would be fun. Mm-hmm. But then you're <laughs> looking at a show like Tagged, where you're in the desert for a month, and all you've got is one another. And those girls became my family. Mm. So it's just different. Yeah. It's different every time. Yeah, that's cool. And it's funny, actually, that you brought up uh, just that you guys were in Albuquerque shooting mm-hmm. like in, in New Mexico. Uh, we had uh, RJ Mitty on the show, and he was from Breaking Bad. Okay. And he spoke to like how like the novelty that is that town and like mm-hmm. how beautiful the studios are and like the whole area is just like so thriving with film. Um And when I think about it now, too, like you have places like Georgia hopping into the mix Mm -hmm. and, you know, different states that are all exploring, like, I mean, even Canada, that's a different country. But um, how do you see film like because of the digital age and streaming and all of that stuff? 
how do you see film kind of expanding across, you know, the U.S. versus like kind of the world? It's mm-hmm. growing and growing, I feel like. Well, I mean, <laughs> the biggest reason why film is moving out of California is tax incentives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's great so tax expensive. incentives in yeah, Toronto yeah. and Vancouver and, yeah. um, you know, Atlanta. Of course, there's so many things filming in Atlanta and New yeah. Orleans. Um, but yeah, I mean, as our narrative storytelling grows and changes and we become better at it, yeah. um, are different, I guess. Yeah, different. Sure. We're going to explore stories that having the necessity for different locations. Um, I think on uh, Rogue One, where I think they filmed that in Iceland or some the Greenland or Iceland or somewhere something. like they, that. They it was gorgeous stuff, because yeah. they were looking for something remote and yeah. they were looking for something foreign and beautiful mm-hmm. and striking to look at. And that's just so cool. I mean, we have this beautiful planet that has so many different locations. They filmed Game of Thrones in Croatia and all over yeah. Europe. Yeah. Um, and I think it's great that that's becoming a huge part of the economy as well because it does employ so many people. Mm-hmm. Film is a great way to just make money and employ. Yeah. So We also know. don't need more people here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's too much. California, yeah. fifth largest economy in the world. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty spectac- like spectacular. But I think that is a good point that um, because like, I mean, I had somebody say to me recently that film's really in its infancy. If you think Hmm. about just, I mean, it's been like roughly 100 years or so of of exploring film, getting up toward that. Actually, yeah. Yeah, just about. What, the 20s, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But the amazing thing is like how much is to come. And something that interests me about that whole thing is we all figured out, um, you know, like how special effects work. And that's become Mm -hmm. like such a huge part of the industry. But there's so much of it that's still like true to film, like Christopher Nolan and guys who like still shoot on film Mm -hmm. and they still make films that are somewhat, you know, less tech related as far as, you know, special effects and all that stuff. Has less in post-production, I guess. Right, right, right. More indie style and and whatnot. Do you have like a preference of um, or like a viewpoint on on the growth of film, like as far as do you like stuff that's like really sci-fi and like out there or do you like for you do you prefer acting in more like indie style or will you just take anything I'll take what I can get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it honors the Lord I'll take what I can get sure sure and uh, I like all genres hmm. I just like storytelling that's the thing if it's a great story and it's a complex character um, that's written well and does justice to that person and it's played with truth and integrity yeah, yeah. that's what I want to be a part of whether yeah. or not it's in you know, space or in Louisiana. I don't care. (laughs) Um, And I think it's great what we've accomplished in terms of post-production. And, you know, you look at movies that are just rife with it and they're gorgeous and they're striking to watch. But then you watch a show that was filmed on film, like The Spectacular Now, that A24 Mm. film with Mm -hmm. Miles Teller and Shailene Woodley. And it's it's a beautifully told story and I it doesn't matter. I love what matter. that production company is doing. It's amazing, mm-hmm. amazing Truly. stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. But it's cool. I mean, like you always go to like the capitals of film, like Universal or like mm-hmm. Warner and all of them. Yeah. And in a way, it's like those companies are all competing to obviously follow the trend, whatever's popular as far as, yeah. you know, in some ways. Um, but it's cool to see companies like A24 and, and like Annapurna and like different companies mm-hmm. like that that are like really like pursuing like what is truly film or like really indie and like in the cool stuff like that. Yeah. I, I love that stuff. Like the urban stuff is like really cool to me urban. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I it's mean, pretty neat. you can't knock Avengers and what they've created with their 22 movies and all of their post-production and that it's just fun entertainment. They did a great job Mm -hmm. and they employed so many people and they made so much money Mm -hmm. and (laughs) people find so much enjoyment out of it. But then there are people who are, you know, artists who want to do the A24, you know, plan B um, kind of films. And that's great. And that's Mm -hmm. your prerogative. And it's just personal opinion mm-hmm. um i think everyone is doing a great job honestly like it is i amazing. enjoyed yeah. endgame i jumped out of my chair and i was yeah. screaming in the theater and i yeah. also really enjoy what a24 has been doing like ingrid goes west was one of my favorite films that mm-hmm. i saw mm-hmm. for the past couple of years so yeah yeah that's really cool well let's talk about you like to kind of close it out um what are your future plans like as far as um you don't have to say like what you're doing but um as far as like what kind of jobs are you hoping to book? Do you have anything on the agenda or are you just kind of taking it day by day? Yeah, I mean, you always have to at this point in the game. Yeah. Um, it's day by day. It's whatever 
the Lord brings and um, whatever my managers and agents find and what's right for my look, what's yeah. right for my age, yeah. um, what's right for my ethnicity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are so many things that I would love to be a part of. We talked about that. I just love storytelling. Great stories, like, excite me so much. There are scripts that you just, you weep when you read them because they're such thoughtful, compassionate stories. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is just a day by day, like everyone's job is, Mm -hmm. you know. You plan out your life and then something happens and it completely changes. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of, like, Legacies, the show that I was on, I went on an audition. It was two weeks. I got a phone call and they said, you're going to Atlanta in two days. Pack, (laughs) you might be there for three months. Oh, my gosh. And that's just... That is That's acting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. I'm getting my business degree so that Very hopefully cool. I can open my own production company. I would love yeah. to be able to do that. I worked mm-hmm. with some exceptional guys out in Atlanta who have their own production company. And, you know, I'm so thankful that there are people out there who are passionate and excited and willing to do the hard work. Yeah, um, for sure. And I want to do that. I just want to be a storyteller in my yeah. life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks for doing this. It's my goodness, fun. it was my pleasure. It's been fun. We already almost hit 30 minutes. That Did was we pretty, really? Pretty quick. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> pretty quick spell. But um, thanks for doing this. Um, you can find Lulu on Instagram, Twitter. What's yes. your handle? Is it different it's on Lulu both? and Terixa. There you go. That's, it's Super the same. Super simple. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, thanks for being on. Um, thanks for following us, guys. Your episode number 44, I think, in about a year. So we're, we're cranking right. them out. So thanks for doing it. Well done. That's awesome. Um, and be sure to follow us on YouTube and subscribe and do all that stuff and check it out. And thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye.